another edition of The Hidden Plot with Rachel. As you can see, I've driven down to the allotment today, so this is a different entrance um, when you've actually got deliveries and packages and you've got to come in your car. But it is still quite hidden back from the road, so unless you know what's at the end of those garages, you have absolutely no idea that the allotment is there. So I've driven this week because hopefully, as you can see, I've got a boot full of stuff to bring down. So let's get unloading and get to work. Before I forget, this is our new addition to the allotment. So this is a solar panelled uh, water fountain. When the sun is shining, it does actually get quite high. And, but obviously when it's breezy, we do lose the water too. So it's something that we need to keep our eye on. But that's a nice trickle to the background. So move the parcels inside. So the smallest one on the table. Then we've got four, which is um, four of the same thing. And then the larger one outside. So I wonder what's inside. It's like Christmas. <laughs> So if we start with the small one, so the camera at the minute is either always in two up places, it's either in my hand or strategically placed in the polytunnel, where this will allow me hopefully to get some different camera angles. So it's a bit of a new toy. So once in place, I moved on to the next one. So these are plant halos. These are for the tomatoes. Now, if I take the middle bit out, knowing me, I will put it somewhere safe and forget where it is. But the tomato goes in the middle, basically, and it goes into the ground. And I basically ordered four boxes of it, so I should have 12 in total. With nine tomatoes, it worked quite well. And then the final package that was outside. So this is a fine mesh. So this was meant to replace some of the green stuff uh, that we've got on the um, blue poles outside but we've decided that it's probably a bit too fine and if we start trying to pin it in it's probably just going to tear. So moving on to the tomato prep then for the halos. Spread out some compost on the bits that I'd weeded, put in some chicken manure to give it a bit of a feed and then sort of like hold it in to mix it all up and then I spread it out so it's all a bit even. Now the plan is obviously is that I'm not going to add the tomato on this day. I want to let the feed sort of work its way in and the compost as well. Uh, and I will come back and put the tomatoes in another day. So once that was done and I sort of marked out roughly where I want the tomatoes to go, there is a bit of potting on to do. So some of the uh, plants that we've got there, so as you can see there's a number of chilies, um, they do need potting on because eventually they will go on the right side of the tunnel still needs clearing and a bit of weeding but then there's some other bits in there that will stay on the racking such as the basil etc and they just needed potting on and then I'm still growing some plants for a number of friends now we're due a bit of a cold um, patch so I've said I'll hold on to them until this sort of cold bit's gone because uh, I'd hate for them to lose their broccoli or their tomatoes so that's my last tomato that I'll be giving out can't wait for that to go and then, as I've said, we were due to get hit with a cold patch, so I've been talking to a few people on Instagram about the different things that they do. Some people say that they use one of these, so this is a paraffin heater. When I popped up yesterday, uh, it had actually gone out by the time I got there, but you could still feel that the chimney was actually still warm. It was warm to touch, it was, wasn't hot, so I could move it around. Um, but it seems to do the trick. And then outside what we've done is hopefully you can see little white squares everywhere. So this is over the squash, courgettes, cucumbers. One day I'll remember that we're growing cucumbers. Cucumbers and the broccoli, which are obviously dotted around the allotment plot. So plan here was to sort of go and take them all off. But actually it was quite a nice day yesterday. The breeze had dropped down, whereas today it's back up again. Um, so I thought, well, while I'm up there, I was going to do a bit of weeding. So I thought I will pull all the blue meshing across because like I say they are quite thick they do seem to block out a little bit of the light and we didn't want to be stunting the growth so I pulled them back revealing all the horrible weeds so but it meant it cleared the way for me to sort of crack on get them dug out and take all the uh, the stuff that we've got to keep the plants warm well, warmer and hopefully frost free I'm not sure if you can see actually when I've turned you around, there are some 
prefer the plants in the bottom left hand corner so there's a little garden centre centre nursery sort of place where we've been popping up to get some of the compost uh, and they've got all different types of herbs so we've actually managed to get hold of a mint um, a couple of chives and then we've bought some more flowers to go around the pond and that's the dahlia that is a bit touch and go. And as if by magic, that's the weeding done. It's like, you know, I clicked my fingers and it was like, ta sparkly new. But now the weeding's done, it means the final job of the day. So this is a new storage box. So as I mentioned, we have a lot of weeds in the polytunnel that I need taken out, but to take them out, I need to get somewhere to store all of our tools. So look at those weeds, ugh. Um, so I bought the box in B&Q, so it was £35, um, it does come, so it's ready, um, it does come with a hole so you can lock it if needs be, but at the minute what I'm thinking is I'll go put it where we're hopefully going to put the compost bins, um, but it, that's probably only going to be temporary, we'll see. But it says it should, uh, you know, it's all weathers, you don't need any tools, and it should apparently only take 15 minutes to build. It's like I say, I'm just going to put it in that back corner, so I just need to clear the space. So I've dug down into the soil, because it does seem higher than the rest of the plot, uh, and I might put it, wanted it to be sort of lower than the bricks, so then if we do decide it's going to stay there, then I can put the bricks in as well to sort of like give it a bit of a path, or a wider path. Anyway, so here we go. It says 15 minutes, let's see what I can do. I think it would be 15 minutes if you can click it in straight away. As you can see, I've had a bit of fun trying to get them all clicked, but then once I'd sort of mastered the art of clicking them all in, it was not actually too bad. It's just all about lining it up and making sure that you don't put too much pressure on it because obviously you don't want to crack it. And the lid went on really well as well. Um, I'm not really too sure what those holes were for, but anyway. It is done and it is in place. So as you can see, there's a bit of a gap around it. I've obviously dug too wide, um, but I've, like I say, I've cleared further than it needed just to sort of give us a bit more space. And then popped, and then once all that was done, I was back at home. As you can see, the weather wasn't too bad. So in that box, that's a new box, so that was going to be carrot. So I sifted the soil during the week uh, and scattered some of the seeds. And then we've got the potatoes. So I do need to keep my eye on the potatoes and sort of keep mining them up. As you can see, this bit more space in a couple of those buckets for me to add some more compost but we don't want the frost getting them but other buckets um they're sort of obviously just starting to sort of peep out so they're all at different stages really and some of the uh some of them have more uh, space and this is because obviously we didn't put them all in in one day we have staggered them so their requirements are a bit different but thank you for watching today and we'll be in touch soon so stay safe everyone and we'll see you soon